So welcome to my presentation. Uh, I would like to start with a short teaser. So I just run a video. Yeah, but it should go also from here. So you see a parrot and a smartwatch. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, is it in Sony? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I have the parrot also here. So we will see in the end if we will. Yeah, maybe we can try to play with it. I tried a little bit, and I am afraid it's some kind of interference here. Uh, I I saw this problem once before okay. in a Sony building. It can be a lot of metal, and it can somehow probably uh, interrupt the Wi-Fi connection. I I'm not sure, uh, but it looks like the same problem we had before. But Okay, so we will see maybe outside. <laughs> uh, okay, so this presentation should be about uh, the smartwatch product, what it can, what it can do, uh, uh, what's an air drone you saw? It's a flying robot. I will a little bit talk about it, and generally about smartwatch two product and uh, the open API it has, what you can do with it. And yeah, if uh, somebody will be interested in that, uh, yeah, I can talk a little bit more about how to start developing, how how easy it is, or how well how complicated you will see. So, short, shortly about me, I'm from Sony. Uh, I'm developer support engineer. Uh, I am also an Android freelancer, and I do some Android apps in my free time. Uh, and I enjoy hackathons like. This one, we, we were participating what James organized, and also this, this demo application uh, was made there. So, yeah, so hopefully we will have more hackathons like this. Um, so, what's SmartWatch 2? Uh, do you know this product a little bit? Have you heard about it? Have you seen it? So, a little bit. Yeah, it, yeah. so it looks, looks like this. <laughs> it's square. And yeah, uh, it has a color display. So yeah, when it's on, it's a true color and you can display anything. Um, but also it has the translate trans reflective LCD. So it has low power mode when it's only black and white or four shades, shades of gray. And you can show something on the display without draining too much power. Um, body is from aluminum, so it's quite light. It has different wristbands, so you can choose your style, some metal and different ones. Uh, you see the resolution. What's important that it's compatible with any Android phone, so it doesn't need to be Sony phone. It, uh, it has to be Android 4.0 or more. It has also NFC, like similarly like the camera, so you can pair it easily by, by just touching your phone. The communication is via Bluetooth 3.0. So the logic is usually running on the phone and the smartwatch is like an external display. You can display anything or uh, measure some data. I will talk about it later. Mm, it's charged by standard USB. It's water resistant. And the battery lasts around three, four days when you are using it. And it can last seven days when it's only for a watch. <laughs> Um, so we have quite a lot of applications already out there. Mm, 
it's uh, more than 600 and yeah, what you can imagine is usually already done, but hopefully it will be <laughs> always something new and new. So you can handle your calls, read notification, see your calendar events, read some email, Facebook updates, Twitter updates, control your music player. That's, that's what I quite like. So when I'm biking, I can switch songs on my watch, for example. Um, you can control slideshow, what I should have done before. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and stuff like this. So uh, we have a Smart Connect application, which is uh, part of uh, this framework, and you can also search for apps there. So um, you can look look up what's supported for SmartWatch and get get it easily. Um, error drone is the second part of this project, and here are some basic information. So uh, have you seen this flying before? <laughs> Uh, I think last month they just released a new version, version 3, and it's also quite cool. This one is uh, more simple, and but it's already quite good. I think uh, it has quite good stabilization, so I was also flying outside when it was a little bit windy, and it can it can hold and stay in one position if the wind is not so strong. If, if it's stronger, I last time I landed on the tree. <laughs> It was quite complicated to get the drone down. <laughs> so, but otherwise, it's I think it's quite good. It has a lot of sensors, some ultrasound sensor to measure ground altitude, uh, some high-speed camera to measure the drone speed, gyroscope, accelerometer, magnetometer. So, they, it's using all these sensors mostly f to yeah control the movement, and it is also quite robust. So. Mm, it's quite light, and it's the body is from fiber. The outside hull is a little bit, I think, more easier to destroy. Luckily, we had four, <laughs> so we were able to finish the application. <laughs> but yeah, we made some damage. <laughs> it can record uh, HD video, and the uh, angle is very wide, so it's really convenient. You, it's called AR drone because it's augmented reality, so you can fly just by watching the video, it's a little bit tricky, but uh, yeah, you can. Uh, this one is communica communicating via Wi-Fi, so the phone is connecting to um, Wi-Fi router, what's inside of the drone. And what's important for us also here is that it has an open API, so you can access all the, you could even control the rotors individually, but luckily it has also a more simple API, just say, go up, go forward, and so So I will show it later. So what I would like to focus more is uh, the SmartWatch product uh, and what you can do with it to open APIs. So the API is called Smart Extension APIs, and it's for the all products from this family. We have also some smart headsets, the old version of smartwatch, and also some other products. And you can use this API uh, in the same way for, for all these products and, uh, and use uh, these common features. So for example, you can easily show notification by the same API on all these devices. So it's enough you make one application and it can register these devices and it can in the same way show notification all on all of them. Uh, the same case can be, your, for example, using the sensors from device. So all the devices that have accelerometer, you can register for listening to this data and you can receive the data and make anything what you want with it. So the main parts of the APIs are registration and cap capabilities API. It's for um, mostly for registering the device that, okay, this, this device supports notification, this device has a sensor, so your application will know that it can use, for example, this smart device. And also, from the other hand, uh, your applications are registered via this API, so um, you say that you have an application that requires a sensor, and it will work for all these devices that has this sensor. Um, other APIs are notification API to show notification, control APIs for controlling really various features, for example, the vibrator of the SmartWatch 2, or start listening to sensor data or showing data on display. 
and the last one is the sensor API what I told before that you can listen to the data from the sensors uh, up to, uh, there is an accelerometer and for example also a magnetometer to get the compass data so if you're interested in this API it's the part of Sony add-on API Sony add-on SDK which is currently our our only one SDK that is merging all the APIs together and it's downloadable here <laughs> so what you uh, what you need to start is mostly some Android know-how so everything is everything is an Android application in this case mm. when we take this API from the smartwatch 2 perspective it's uh, you can do some stuff with it so the basic things are you can display anything on the display some Android layouts text images uh, is here somebody who is experienced in Android a little bit okay so I can talk a little bit about it <laughs> so you can use the sensor data uh, in a very similar way as also Android SDK has so you r register to sensor mm, sensor listener and you receive callbacks when there are new data so it's quite easy to approach when you already done something for Android you can show the notification as I mentioned the vibrator and uh, what we recently published are these last two features is that you can make your own watch face so you can customize how the watch will look like that's quite fun and also you can show some extra widgets on the same screen with the watch so for example currently I'm showing uh, the temperature in, yeah, in the current city I have and I see the last notification that I received and and so so you, developers can make their own widgets and come up with their own ideas so this is something quite new I think from last month so we are really curious to see some nice implementations I saw already tons of widgets uh, watch faces that's really something that developers like probably also users Mm, so uh, it looks like this so if you are mm, mm, it's connected to your phone and you can create your own watch face which you can mm, come mm, yeah, it looks like this so you have the screen and you can drag and drop some widgets or watch faces and you create your own look and feel so it's also quite easy to use mm, that corner that's a showcase that our low active power mode feature that's when you are interested in making a, an application that runs all the time and it should be on the display and you want some controls you can use the low power mode uh, of the display and show some controls so even if it's uh, like the display is uh, it looks like it's offline because it's not shining but it's using this low active power mode and it's reflective display and you are still able to control the stuff there so you can have some application that is running all the time and it's not draining too much power yeah so that's it what you can do Sorry, um, so that, that image to the right the bottom right mm -hmm. so that is the screenshot of the phone application where you drag and drop stuff. yeah this is the part of the smart connect application that I mentioned so yeah that's the standard thing that you can install it's pre-installed on Sony phones but you can install on it on any phone and it's also the center where everything is connected together so the smart devices are registering here and yeah you can also configure them in this case the watch face yeah. so yeah you can rename it as you want and yeah <laughs> okay so if you're interested to make some <laughs> watch face for your own it's not hard yeah it requires some android coding down, download and set up the Android uh, Sony add-on SDK and the easiest way how to get started is similar as James mentioned by samples because I think they are made quite well so it's uh, easy to update the samples with your own implementation of the watch face or some widget for example or any other stuff so we have a separate sample for each feature so I hope it will be easy to use for developers there is also some java docs that you should read <laughs> if you if you get in troubles okay 
now about our project. Um, as I mentioned before, we were working on it on la Hackathon last month. Uh, it was a very nice even event. <laughs> our team was uh, uh, made by three people. Jonas was meant to be here today, but he had some other things to do, so he sent excuse. <laughs> and uh, we made a team that was part-time working on the event like support for the participants and half time we were playing with this so it's not it it wasn't so hard that we needed three people to do it <laughs> but we didn't have so much time um, so yeah uh, how we did it we used the easiest way possible so we downloaded the samples available so there is a sample for the AI, AI drone app it's called Free Flight 2 and it's the standard application where you already have the live view from the drone, you have some joysticks to control, to go up, to go down, forward, backwards, also some configuration. So it's really nice because it's open source. So we grabbed that one. And then the second sample that we grabbed is our smart extension sample. Uh, and it was the Hello Sensor sample that is gathering data. So our idea is, was, as you've seen, to control the drone with the sensor data. So, mm, yeah. So we thought connecting these two projects it will be very easy, and it was. <laughs> the only thing what we needed to do is was to find the right place how to connect these two samples together, and it's here. <laughs> so we were listening to the sensor update. And each time we received uh, new data from the accelerometer, we did a little magic with this data. Uh, <laughs> James told me that I, I, I should never call a method like magic threshold, <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> so, No, 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 exactly. <laughs> but there is a separate method to, to flip, so it wasn't hard to do. It was uh, like one API call. It's not part of this code. Uh, this code is uh, collecting the accelerometer data, uh, which are mm, usually values between 0 and 10, or yeah, or minus, minus 10 to 10, if it's only orientation. If you move quickly, you can get even more. Uh, because it takes the uh, acceleration of the gravity. So that's why it's around minus 10 to 10. So this, we take these values, convert it in some magic way, <laughs> and send to the drone control service, and say that when you have this value for accelerometer, go up. If you have this value, go down. Uh, the important thing is that we have two modes so between, you, between which you need to switch. So in one mode, you are uh, using this gesture to go up and down, and rotating your hand means turning around. That's like the controlling mode. And then you switch to the second mode, that's the flight mode. And then when you tilt your hand, it's going forward, backward, and rotation is moving right and left. So that's how we interpret these two data, uh, this data to the drone. I have also yeah, how look the magic threshold. It's mostly taking these accelerometer values and saying, for example, here, I told that I want the all the accelerometer data what I receive to be between two and nine, <laughs> mm, or no, <laughs> because this uh, this uh, these functions set pitch, set roll, set yaw, set gaze. What are some uh, some speed of movements to the drone are accepting valu values between minus one and one. So I needed to translate all the accelerometer values to this range from minus one to one. So I told that I will take the range two to nine, that will be the base for zero to one. <laughs> uh, so it means uh, I wanted to filter threshold some value, so if you make some small movement, it's still on the same position. 
but also I wanted a smooth uh, a way to smoothly accelerate so it's interpolated linearly so how you change your tilt it's getting more and more speed so this is the magic <laughs> how it's converting yeah then we made some simple UI so it's easier to control uh, as it was the part of a gaming hackathon we wanted to make also some gaming <laughs> gaming part in it so we created a timer and the uh, and the theme of the hackathon was below surface below the surface so our idea was uh, to get the drone below the table <laughs> on top of the table <laughs> so yeah that was the game part so as fast as you could get there the better you are. <laughs> um, here you see uh, the different modes uh, of the drone. I mentioned these two. It's the controlling mode when you want to rotate him and go up and down. And this flight mode is when you are controlling to go backward, forward, fly left, fly right. And the first two is just hovering in the air. And the second one is landed. <laughs> <laughs> that's emergency <Yeah>. so <laughs> so if you are flying somewhere you shouldn't be <laughs> it shut up completely <laughs> instantly yeah exactly <laughs> yeah Th there is also this menu button which you use normally for takeoff and landing it can really uh, nicely land but if it's something very dangerous <laughs> you can press emergency and and yeah we needed that button <laughs> very often <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, for this version, it's hard, but they have also a GPS version, and yeah, they have a feature to go home. And so that's quite good. We 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 used a power version. Uh, it was on the slide before. Uh, it's it's it has a stronger rotor, so it can fly quickly, and also the battery lasts around 36 minutes. That's quite okay to test. <laughs> Yeah, so and that's it. You saw the video, and if you are really interested how it looks like, the project is open source, and you can find it on Git GitHub. Yeah, you can make your own modification. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. Do you have some questions? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Can we see the slide? Yeah, that will yeah, we can try. <laughs>